This video will demonstrate a pretty cool mathematical property called Benford's Law, which predicts a certain probability for the occurrence of leading digits in a list of numbers. So let's say we had a list of numbers and took the leading digits from each one. Many people would assume that these digits would show up consistently throughout a given data set. For example, one might predict that the number of leading ones would be roughly equal to the number of leading fives. However, this isn't the case. Benford's law says that we should expect the number 1 to show up about 30% of the time, and the number 5 to show up only about 8% of the time. And the amazing thing is, this law applies to a wide variety of data, as varied as stock prices, lengths of rivers, and birth rates. In addition, since most people who falsify data don't know about this phenomenon, Benford's law can even be used to identify fraud in data sources like check registers and tax returns. So let's take a look at some examples. As a quick note, I'll be using the Curic Strata data browser along with a Benford's Law extension to help me pull data from the web and then graph it. Alright, so we'll first take a look at the size of lakes in Minnesota. Wikipedia has about 1,100 of them listed. So I'll pull in my data, and then I'll go ahead and save it to my project, and then I'll open up the Benford's Law extension. And you can see the Benford's Law probabilities, which we looked at earlier, graphed in gold. So we'll take a look at the leading digit distribution for the size of these lakes, which appear in blue. As you can see, the blue line follows Benford very closely. We can also run the test on the literal zone, which is almost a perfect match. Both of these follow the Benford's curve quite closely, where the number of ones appear far more than the number of nines. Now let's take a look at some US Census data. We'll go to their website and we'll scroll down to the county section, and then we're gonna pop open the CSV file provided, which has got about 3,200 records. This file has got all kinds of good census data as reported at the county level for each U.S. state. So we'll go ahead and pop open the Benford module, and then we could look at, say, the population size for the year 2000. Or we could look at the birth rates from 2002. Or we could even take a look at death rates from 2003. We can even increase this resolution by expanding the test to look at the first two digits. It's pretty amazing that for 3,200 different counties that Benford's law follows so closely. Now it's important to note that Benford's works on most natural data sets, but does not work on ones that are artificially altered. For instance, it won't work on the region ID, or say the division ID, as these are pre-assigned numbers handed out by the US Census Bureau. Similarly, Benford's law also won't work with other pre-assigned data, like say postal codes or UPC numbers. Okay, let's move away from data found in nature and take a look at data from the social news site DIG. When you post an article, DIG tracks various statistics for you. A different website called Social Blade keeps track of statistics for the top thousand diggers. This includes number of submissions and what becomes popular. I just pulled in my data set and I'll save it and then I'll just tile my view. As a fan of DIG, when I play with this data, I found it pretty interesting. There are actually four people who have an 80% or better track record of submitting stories that eventually hit the DIG front page with the founder of DIG clocking in at a 97% success rate. Anyway, let's run our Benford's test on this data too. We'll pop open the graph and select our table, and then we'll quickly look at a person's ranking. As expected, the ranking would not follow Benford since it's actually a predefined number between one and a thousand. However, let's take a look at other statistics, like say, all the popular stories. Or we could take a look at the total submitted stories or we could view the total number of digs. Incredibly, all of these follow Benford's very closely. Okay, for our final example, we'll take a look at how Benford's can be used in fraud detection. We'll open up a data set that was part of a 1993 fraud case in Arizona. The thrust of the case was that an employee was trying to defraud the state by making payments to a fake vendor. Now let's run these amounts through our Benford's analysis. We'll go ahead and select our table, and then the amount field, and as we see, the curve does not match as it should. As we look at the actual numbers, we can see that the person started small as a test and then ramped up the payments. They never actually went over $100,000, as that may have set off a red flag in the accounting system. In addition, most of these numbers begin with 8 and 9, which obviously don't conform to the Benford's distribution we've seen, and which we would normally see in a corporate check history. Well, we hope you enjoyed this quick overview of Benford's Law. If you'd like to try it out with your own data, feel free to download Curic Strata and the Benford's Law extension from our website. Thanks.